With their number of remaining games dwindling, the Hoosier football team had a must-win contest against Wisconsin on Saturday. Could the Hoosiers take a giant step towards bowl eligibility? As football season winds down, basketball season begins. Both the men's and women's teams took to the floor in exhibition tune-ups this past weekend. We have full coverage. And the IU volleyball team welcomed the rival Purdue Boilermakers into Bloomington, needing a victory to improve their standings in the Big Ten. All this and more coming up on Hoosier Sports Night. Welcome into this episode of Hoosier Sports Night. I am Casey Richards alongside Josh Greenberg. And Josh, basketball season is finally underway. A lot of hope there. But you can't say the same about the Indiana football team. Yeah, well, as a lifelong Cubs fan, I'm used to looking forward to the next season or uh, the next year. So I'm kind of used to this. Now, for the Indiana-Wisconsin football series, it's been a one-sided affair. Going into Saturday's contest, the Badgers had won the last four matchups by a combined score of 181-64. to the Hoosiers, however, were victorious in the two previous meetings before that, including a 63-32 drubbing in Madison back in 2001. With the Hoosiers coming off two heartbreaking losses, many expected another blowout in the Badgers' favor. Let's go to the highlight. Indiana's only truly been out of two games this season, so reason to believe they could defeat the number 21 ranked Badgers at home. We start off IU down 10 with Ben Chappell looking for Tandon Doss to get on up and make a play. And Doss says, Mr. Chappell, that for which you ask, you shall receive touchdown. Doss would pick up a pair of those. And Wisconsin back on the offensive as John Clay gets the handoff and he punches through the IU defense to get into the end zone. IU was terrible in the red zone, giving up five of five chances. Moving on to the fourth quarter, still 24-14 Wisconsin. Ben Chappell finds Terrence Turner for the score. Chappell picked up three touchdown passes against two picks and made up for an ineffective Indiana rushing attack. Wisconsin had an answer thanks to a defensive breakdown, which is something that killed the Hoosiers in a game versus Iowa. This would lead to a score. Now Bill Lynch shows the necessary cojones going for it on fourth down and getting a touchdown from Trey Burgess. And Indiana pulls within three. Now when IU absolutely needed a stop, they could not get it. Nick Toon, who terrorized the IU secondary with 123 yards, gets 17 on this one, and you could stick a fork in the Hoosiers as Wisconsin would finish off this game and take it 31-28. to Before the beginning of the season, the Indiana football team established a goal of becoming bowl eligible. With the past few weeks resulting in very disappointing losses, it was understood that this week's matchup against Wisconsin was a must-win game. Indiana did, in fact, play very well. What was even more notable was that they played well for all four quarters. Unfortunately, however, Wisconsin's running game was too much to handle. The Badgers rushed for a total of 294 yards on 52 carries. Indiana, on the other hand, had only 63 yards on the ground. That's a tough, that's a tough offense to play against. It really is. I mean, because they, they are so physical. They, I think they came into the game averaging 35 minutes a game in time of possession, which means your defense is on the field a lot. Got some, they got some huge backs. These guys could play linebacker. They could play defensive end anywhere. Uh, made it tough on us. We knew it was going to be a battle all game, though. You know, uh, Austin Thomas, Nick Polk, Jamie Curley, Matt Mayberry, these guys all, they went to war for four quarters. I mean, it's, it's hard. It's hard on their bodies hitting this big guy, and we knew, we knew if we delivered back, it was going to be hard on him. You know, so uh, we, we got him in positions. We... Uh, Got them in, in, you know, where we wanted them, third and longs. We, we got chances, you know, to make plays and stop them. Um, if we could have done that, it would have been a different game. But, yeah, like you said, they, they got two great backs. And, you know, it was like <clears throat> a few of the other games we've had. Uh, it's a stop here or a conversion there. And uh, they made them today. I think that's a very, very good football team we played, though. With three disheartening losses in a row, IU desperately needs a win to pick itself back up. I mean, we, we spent a lot of time, I mean, breaking down every aspect of our football you know, in season as well as out of season. And, and uh, um, you know, there's, you know, some of it's just, you know, you, the guy breaking on the ball a hair quicker or getting the pass rush there a hair quicker or pass blocking a hair longer or making it a little better, you know, so it, it's, it's all those things. I, I think that we have to make key plays, 
you know, in the red zone. We have to score. We can't commit turnovers, you know, and things like that. I, um, you know, we have, we have to capitalize off other teams' mistakes. And I think in the past few weeks, that's where we haven't been good. I mean, it's been tough. Three, three weeks in a row has been, you know, it's been hard to handle. Um, but we're, we're going to be better. From Memorial Stadium, I'm Samantha Daywig, Hoosier Sports Night. The Badgers have become synonymous with Smash Mouth football, and that continued Saturday as Wisconsin racked up 294 yards on the ground compared to Indiana's puny 63. John Clay led the way with 134 yards on only 15 carries and a touchdown. The Hoosier offense was again keyed by Ben Chappell's passing attack. The junior quarterback threw for 323 yards and three touchdowns, but also tossed two costly interceptions. Heading into the fourth quarter Saturday, the Hoosiers had Wisconsin right where they wanted them, 10 points ahead. After blowing two consecutive fourth quarter leads against Northwestern and Iowa, Indiana found itself coming from behind, only to fall short once again. Here's Nick LaGrange with more from Memorial Stadium. The Hoosiers' loss to Wisconsin on Saturday was the third straight in a series of really close games. What made this game different from the heartbreakers at Northwestern and Iowa, however, was that IU never squandered a large lead late in the game. In fact, the Hoosiers executed very well late in the second half to pull within a field goal of the Badgers. But for the third straight week, it wasn't to be. After the game, Coach Lynch spoke about IU's struggles in the past few games, as well as the state of the team's morale. I was really proud of our guys. We challenged them pretty good at halftime, and they came out and played on both sides of the ball, and, and uh, I was really proud of that. And, you know, it was like <clears throat> a few of the other games we've had. Uh, it's a stop here or a conversion there. And uh, they made them today. I think that's a very, very good football team we played. I mean, we played some good teams this year, but that's a very, very good football team. The Hoosiers now travel to Happy Valley to face Penn State next week. If the Hoosiers want any chance of being invited to a bowl game this year, they must defeat the Nittany Lions and then look to defeat the hated Boilermakers on November 21st. From Memorial Stadium, I'm Nick LaGrange, Hoosier Sports Night. Saturday's attendance was 36,611. Not bad for a noon game late in the season. However, one could only imagine what the ticket demand would have been had Bob Knight accepted the athletic department's invitation to be honored at halftime as part of the newest IU Athletics Hall of Fame class. My co-host has more on the ceremony. During halftime of Saturday's football game against Wisconsin, Indiana University took the chance to honor the seven newest inductees into its Athletics Hall of Fame. Now, of course, the class was headlined by legendary head basketball coach Bob Knight, who did not make the trip back to Bloomington, but was represented by longtime best friend and former sports editor of the Bloomington Herald Telephone, Bob Hamill. Bob Knight, who is represented today by This is a great class here, and, and uh, all of them are very popular, but there was a certain uh, kind of yearning for these people to, to, uh, to bring back the feeling they had with, with Bob, and uh, uh, that, was a, that was a really nice touch. Out there right now. He's the greatest basketball coach that's ever coached in college, and I was with him for 20-some years. I learned a lot from him. There's been no better than Bob in coaching basketball, and he certainly richly deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. One of Knight's main reasons for not coming was the attention that his appearance would take off of the other six inductees, a decision that Hamill supports. I think it was the right thing to do. I, I think it would have been a, a, a media chaos last night, and uh, uh, if he had come, it would have been an inundated. <laughs> so so uh, I think the decision was right, but it didn't particularly work out the way he intended. Other inductees included legendary soccer coach Jerry Yeagley and former basketball player Steve Downing. From Memorial Stadium, I'm Casey Richards, who's your sports night? Coming up after the break, the 2009-2010 Indiana basketball team made their debut last week in an exhibition game against Grace College. See how the Hoosiers newcomers fared. And the women's basketball team was wrapping up their exhibition portion of the schedule against Grand Valley State. Stay tuned for full coverage on Hoosier Sports Night.